The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the man from California, Mr. Peters, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Energy security and climate action are ripe for bipartisan cooperation in this Congress, but unfortunately, H.R. 1 is a partisan grab bag that fails to meet the challenge before us and reverses our climate progress in many cases. H.R. 1 would eliminate the methane emissions reduction program, the greenhouse gas reduction fund, the and energy efficiency and electrification incentives that reduce energy demand and costs for Americans, all vital components of the Inflation Reduction Act. Last week, climate scientists issued their starkest warning yet that the world must cut emissions by 60 percent by 2035 to limit the planet's rise in temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We don't have time to waste refighting the battles of last year. Now, some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have said they don't want a, a bill that favors one type of energy over the other. The problem is that the, their bill, H.R. 1, explicitly favors fossil fuels. It ramps up oil and gas leasing and exploration over the clean, affordable fuels and technologies of the future. Right now, pipelines that carry fossil fuels are already expedited and given regulatory exemptions, while transmission lines, which transmit energy electricity long distances from all energy sources, don't get the same preferential treatment. The current system favors fossil fuels, risking our energy and climate security. Now, look, it's not all bad. There are pieces of H.R. 1 that I believe we can work together on a better process for determining the level of review to apply to a project, reusing existing data instead of reinventing the wheel at each step, and creating presumptive timelines for review so that projects are not indefinitely stalled. And I'm more than willing to admit that NEPA, a law from 1970, can be updated to meet today's challenges. In fact, clean energy permit reform is required to meet our, our climate goals. But this proposal fails to match the scale of our climate challenge. The current power grid, power grid took 150 years to build. To get to net zero emissions by 2050, we have to triple its size in the next 30 years. According to Americans for Clean Energy Grid, North America has built just seven gigawatts of interregional transmission, transmission since 2014, less than half of that in the United States, so say four. South America has built 22, Europe has built 44, and China has built 260 gigawatts of interregional transmission. We currently have enough wind, solar, and storage projects in the pipeline to power nearly 85% of our economy, but 80% of those projects could be canceled due to insufficient transmission. This decade, we will need to deploy solar and wind at, a, at five to six times our historical record, record pace. So we need to be laser focused on making it easier, not harder to build clean energy because all the money in the world can't solve the climate crisis if we leave it in the bank or don't move fast enough. Our country prides itself on accomplishing big things together, whether it's winning a world war, constructing an interstate highway, or discovering the next big medical breakthrough. During World War II, San Diego war factories built a bomber an hour, a bomber an hour, to help combat fascism and support our, our allies. During COVID-19, we developed a vaccine in less than two years, when 10 to 15 years is the norm. Today, we're debating whether a decade is an appropriate amount of time to construct one single transmission line, an offshore wind facility, or a geothermal plant. But with a climate crisis that requires us to move at a scale and speed, orders of magnitude greater than ever before, we can't be bogged down in reviews and litigation for half a decade before we even begin to build a given project. Now, we can fix our judicial review processes to protect vulnerable communities while preventing wealthy NIMBYs, corporations, and bad actors from blocking essential clean energy projects, which is what is happening right now. We can reduce the level of review for climate projects on non-sensitive land while ensuring that polluting projects remain heavily scrutinized. But what we can't do is simply stand by and accept the status quo that is bogging down clean energy projects that will combat extreme weather and climate catastrophe that threaten vulnerable communities, endangered species, and stable economies. Mr. Speaker, I'm ready for us to get to this vote on a bill that has no chance of becoming law, to get it out of the way so that both sides can come together and work on a bipartisan solution. And I invite any of my colleagues to come to me to talk to Chairman Westerman, who's been working with me on that kind of bipartisan solution. The future of our planet depends on it, and we have no time to waste. 
Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge and welcome Joe Garcia and Michael Morasco, members of the Escondido City Council to Washington, D.C. It's my great honor to now represent that 